Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Ricky here. What do you say we finish our lap that we started yesterday and do the second half of Walt's original Magic Kingdom? Look at the design. Look at the emotional story that is Disneyland. Look at this landscaping in here. I mean, that type of detail is phenomenal. Fantasyland is full of life. But I'm feeling like the back trails of Frontierland are calling me. But I have to say, I do love this cute little bridge that I'm not really sure who could fit on it. And I'm always a big fan of the balconies of Disneyland. Just adds that story of that this is a little shop that maybe the shopkeep lives above. And it really helps add to the scale. In fact, adding to the scale of all of these buildings being a jigsaw cut, right? Every eight, 10 feet, you're getting another cut. And just in this area alone, this little courtyard alone, let's do a quick count. We have this spire, the bridge, a secondary spire. This lower green aesthetic, this little patch here, two types of roof, three types of roof. <laughs> Little balcony there, secondary balcony, tile work there, the stone masonry work up above. And then over here, a whole other type of building with this front area protruding out. Just imagine if everything behind me was just one box. If this was just one box right here, how different would that look than it looks right now? The fact that it's a jigsaw puzzle, it's cut up into so many pieces, just makes it feel like there's so much happening, so much more happening than what there really is. It's just the exit for Pinocchio, that's it. Not a shop, not a place to get food, not a place to eat, not a secondary ride. Exit of one ride with this much texture around it. That is the type of design detailing that made me fall in love with Disneyland. And the Village House restaurant next, this is one of my favorite spots. Let's work our way through this little eatery here. But let's step back. A lot of umbrellas right now. So I'm gonna keep the camera high. How cool is that sun pattern up there in that top clock? And yes, it's keeping accurate time. We have a little over 20 minutes to get around the second half of the park. I absolutely adore, adore that place. Another day without so many umbrellas will have to go even more so into all of its great details. Let's come over to the edge of Casey with all of its amazing landscaping. And let's just spin back and look at it. I feel like not enough attention is paid to just how much storytelling that this is doing. And in, this, in essence, this is kind of like a big fence, right? Like this is kind of a big wall, a big fence that keeps us from seeing into Frontierland or, or down into Main Street, USA. But the fact that it's been cut up into so many different interesting pieces that all contrast but yet complement each other, that is the magic of Disney storytelling and the magic of Fantasyland. And I have to say, you know, if there was some sort of bizarre way to bring Walt back, I think what would make him probably happiest the most would be able to see what became of his beloved Fantasyland.
All right, let's keep our journey going here. And just like that, the music fades down. We can hear the lift of big thunder. We can hear the sound of the wilderness. And we are in a completely different land. As you can see right now, the pathway is flanked on the left and the right with all kinds of different dining options. That's something that is happening right now due to the current state that we're in. You won't always see the opening of Frontierland look like an outdoor dining area, but let's enjoy it while it lasts because being able to sit on these back trails and to take in some of the sounds and just the vibes of sitting on the edge of Fantasyland, who could resist that? Let's push forward. Spencer over in Best Life Beyond, he's a surfer and he's always talking about how this rock work, you know, looks like a wave. But I was doing a little bit of snooping around and if you look at the original concept art for Cars Land, there actually was a cascading piece of rock work like this that would have been opposite of where the famous Cars Land sign is. And they didn't end up doing that because I don't think that they felt like they needed it. But how crazy would it be if this was part of the entryway into the beloved Radiator Springs, right? If this was on one side and then you had the Cars Land sign to the other side and they were gonna do like a, uh, the hood of an old like Model T where there would be like a geyser coming out. Didn't happen, but it's interesting to see. And as soon as I saw this, it immediately took me to that concept art and that made me fall in love with it even more that if this was even hinted by that, I just love how different ideas, they don't die. They just get reshaped and come back to life. If you ever get the experience to go to Disneyland Paris, you'll see a lot of sort of scratched Disneyland ideas that Tony Baxter was able to birth for Disneyland Paris and in a really wonderful way. I love this back shot of Big Thunder themed after Bryce Canyon. And for all the things the Galaxy's Edge expansion took away, I think that it made the Rivers of America and the Outer Edge of Frontierland even better. Just look at this fantastic storytelling of various different frontier type props and tools and these retainer walls. All of this is put here to create a sound barrier so you don't hear the ships flying overhead in Galaxy's Edge and a visual barrier so you don't see that magical train running about. But once again, you get sort of the rock work repeated, a matching the composition of Big Thunder, which just when you get back here, it does make you feel like that you're somewhere maybe in Arizona where the nature is just so rugged. Let's see how far we can see into the tunnel there, the old mine train. Look at that. We are actually, that tree right there is on the other, other side over the rivers of America. And if you're a hardcore Disneylander, you're hearing the Mark Twain in the background, as well as the wildest ride in the wilderness. Just the sound of these rapids and this water, it is so soothing when you come through here. It adds kinetic energy when you're riding through. And it also works with the idea of this being an old mining settlement where the miners would use the water to rush through the soot to see if there was any gold in them there hills.
How relaxing is that? And he goes back around the bridge. Just all the hand-painted signs, the calligraphy, the pinstriping, it's all so perfect. Just this little pond that just exists behind those carts. The rock work to perfectly cap off the berm that keeps the rivers of America different. Just on the other side of there, the Mark Twain or Sailing Ship Columbia could be going by, but this berm, this inner park berm, keeps it out of sight. So then when we cruise around the edge, we get that big reveal. I don't know about you friends, but I can hear that whistle of the big thunder cruising behind me all day long. So if all of this isn't here, then the magic trick of coming around this corner and seeing the rivers of America is lost. Also, keep in mind, Disney was able to grade the land however they want to. This land being graded up, coming down into a hill, it makes you not only feel like you're walking into the riverbanks, but it, grading this up keeps the line, keeps all the people waiting in line hidden from you. So that when you stand over here, you just get to see the beauty, which is Big Thunder. And think about how that would be ruined with seeing a few hundred people waiting in line to get in. The people are hidden down below. All these embankments make it so that we can't see the community of citizens of Disneyland that are waiting to go on. And then when you're going upstairs to get into this old mining shack, you're actually going up to ground level or what we perceive as ground level because of the way that they have graded the path work down there. Hiding all of those guests out of our eyesight makes Big Thunder Mountain not only seem taller because you don't have people breaking the scale, but it makes it feel so much more removed because it does end up working like a prop that's off into the distance. We are now cruising on the banks of the River of America. And looky there. Looks like someone drank the cocoa and became a real boy. That is so great. Let's take a little walk over here and enjoy some of the things that we'll never get to see again. Like the fact that all these tables have been set down here. Like this couple that's just sitting on the banks. Once again, you take the golden horseshoe, you cut it into the stage door. But by leaving the cut in the balconies, it almost feels like there's a building in between. And then we paint this, two different tears. We have the wall, the fireworks mural, just a little sliver of blue here on the river bell. Then it's compartmentalized a second time is compartmentalized a third time but this time adding on a balcony which is different than the piece before there we have our fourth here we have our fifth and if we work our way around we have our six one building 
sliced up into six different pieces so that when you walk down this path, you don't just feel like there's one building behind you. You feel like there's a whole roll of buildings behind you, making you feel like you're walking down like a little town square, like Julian, California, where all the little shops are just boom, 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 right next to you. Imagine for a minute in your mind's eye, if this was one texture, one balcony, one color, how that would ruin your walk on the rivers of America, just feel like you're walking past one building. But the fact that it's cut up into six different pieces allows your mind to subconsciously feel like there's a little thoroughfare of businesses right there on the edge that you're just able to cruise by. Let's take the, high, the low road this way, because we'll take the high road back. All of these tables out here, for a limited time, while we're in this weird moment, you can sit on a table with a canopy over you, right on the edge of the rivers of America. Man, that's great. That is an opportunity not to be missed. Normally that is just a walkway, the lower walkway, because up top it gets all congested with people trying to go to Pirates or Mansion, people trying to work their way back to Batu for the Galaxy's Edge. But now with our limited capacity, we have this phenomenal little walkway where you can grab up a table, sit with Sailing Ship Columbia as your backdrop, and just get to enjoy Disneyland in a way that you haven't been able to for quite some time. Let's make Fowler's Harbor our turnaround spot as we loop around to work our way back to Main Street. We started our adventure in front of the castle and I'd love to end it there. So we'll just do a quick little walk through my absolute favorite spot of Disneyland, Fowler's Harbor. I think home to the best vibes, the best escapism, and the best place just to chill out. Woo! Do I love it. Such a great little path. Currently we can't get over onto the island, but we will, we will soon. Can I catch him? Can I catch him? Can I catch him? How great is that? You come around this bend. You get to see the full view. I always like to watch one of them drop. Oh, friends. What an amazing day it's been at Disney. Sadly, let's make this our turnaround spot and work our way back to Sleeping Beauty's castle. You, you see, I'm saying turnaround spot, but I keep going deeper because it's like a force field drawing me in. But now let's turn around. Life and responsibilities are calling. But I hope you're enjoying this little walk through the park, looking at the details. I typically do this on my live streams, but the live streams sometimes, as much as I enjoy them, add just a little level of sort of pressure to be entertaining, to keep people going, worrying about the connection. Don't get to shoot as a, such a high definition. So I thought, why not just take a stroll and take everybody with me at a way more comfortable pace. So if you're enjoying this, let me know if you do. Because I have a feeling a couple more of these are gonna drop next week.
So maybe if I skipped your favorite part, we'll go do it next week. When maybe we find a good way, we'll try to find a good view to peer back at the elephant mausoleum. All right, let's head back to Sleeping Beauty's castle via Adventureland. Haunted Mansion has a healthy amount of people hanging out. Let's let this little feller, let's let the little feller pass who wants to lay down. Sounds like somebody's over Disney'd. A lot of people paying notice to this. A new telescope that has appeared on the balcony. But if we think about it, if the owner of this mansion was a sea captain, then it would only make sense that a man of nautical, nautical navigation <laughs> would have such a device. Maybe to peer out at the ships over on the rivers of America. Now I did say we are exiting, but we've always got time to cruise through New Orleans Square, right? I am glad you agree with me. Oh, hello. Do love that sound of Walt's opening day speech. Convert it over to the Morse code. Welcome. Disneyland is your land. Oh, has the beignet line finally died down? <laughs> is this what it takes to get a beignet? You have to be the last person to show up. All right, let's keep cruising down Front Street. Walk as we're cruising through New Orleans Square. A little something that people notice is that this lady's shop up here, La Baton Rouge, maybe it's going to turn into a walk up gumbo. Maybe a quick service restaurant is coming here. Could, could be the case. Oh, look at this view, perfectly tailored to see these streets flanking us or these edge of the streets and just everything ahead of us. Just giving you the feeling that if maybe if you came out of Pirates and you didn't look back this way, you would just see how much more adventure you still had yet. I always take the bridge because I love the view, the vantage point up here. Let's take a look back, shall we? Enjoy that sun. Kissing Disneyland goodbye. It is glorious to be back. Oh, look at that. Straight up walk on. Woo. Tempting, but not today, Satan. Beautiful shot. Let's keep cruising. Once again, the back side of the Riverbell Terrace. We see it compartmentalized. 
chopped up into so many different slices. And we see how the art transitions slowly into the exotic by different colors, different textures, and then slowly, just a gradient, life feels normal. Like this just doesn't feel that abrupt because of all the baby steps that we took to get here. So then you have someone that's just wild, Aztec inspired, the rusted aluminum metal roofs that you see in developing countries. Just the detailing. And that lamp. And that all makes the Jungle Cruise feel normal across from it. Love it. Love that little cutaway. The Adventureland Bazaar, currently not open, but just one block in the story that is Adventureland. Okay, just to say that we did it, it's getting congested, just to say that we did it and get away from these people, not that there's nothing wrong with them, but I'm worried about my audio. Let's exit just at the edge of Frontierland. Let me just put my spurs on my Jordans. Oh, that feels good. How great is that? And just like that, it is 7 p.m. We have spent an hour over the last two days doing a little quick, abbreviated, mellow lap around the park. I hope you enjoyed this. I plan on doing more of these on sort of more hectic weeks in my schedule, but as a way to keep you having a window into the magic and just having a mellow walk to Disneyland and as always hoping that you feel like you got to go to the park with a friend so friends until the next time I see you standing on the bridge in front of Frontierland I hope I see you back here on the channel with more Disneyland news and I hope you enjoyed this walk around the park if you did so give the video a thumbs up maybe even leave a comment and next time You'll find a whole different bunch of categories, a whole bunch of different details and stories to get into to keep it always feeling fresh and new. Friends, until the next time I see you standing in front of Sleeping Beauty's Castle, I'll see you back on the channel with more Disneyland news.